Okay, what I want to do right now is I want to show you the equipment and the materials that I use to prepare a car in order for it to be painted. Now, this is where we go from this stage where a car has been properly prepared with primer, uh, sand sealer, or hardener, whatever it's going to need to be. And this car would be actually ready to be final painted and then clear coated. But before we get to this state right here, to where we can ultimately get to the dragster that you saw on the initial part of this video, where that was co completely customized, completely painted, the car was gorgeous as you saw, and that car went through all these phases that you see here. Now, we take a raw piece of wood, fossil wood, that came off of our CNC mill. So to get it from this state here to this state where it's ready to be painted, and ultimately painted like you saw in the first image, we have to go through a lot of steps. Okay, first of all, depending on the weight of the car that you're actually competing in, the gram weight that's required, you may either use what's called wood hardener. It's, this is Minwax version of the wood hardener. It's very, very high performance, very high strength. Or you may use one of two types of, of sand sealer. This is a latex-based sand sealer or water-based. And then this is a lacquer-based uh, sand sealer. I personally prefer using the lacquer-based uh, sand sealer on which I can take and thin it either with lacquer thinner or I can use acetone or I can use uh, paint thinner. Both works, uh, all three works with that. Now once I've got the, the car uh, sanded down to the basic state, I'll come back with either the hardener. Harder puts more weight than sand sealer, but it makes the car incredibly rigid. I'll probably wind up using the wood hardener on uh, this car here because it's only 35 grams. Once I've done that, then uh, I may come back even with another sand sealer and then I'll actually come back with primer. My favorite kind of primer is actually this primer here. It's the Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. It actually goes on a little thicker than the standard uh, uh, Rust-Oleum Primer here. This is an outdoor primer used to prime uh, steel or whatnot. The filler primer is more custom and oriented towards body paint and that kind of thing. There's also the Ruddy Brown Primer that you can get. Looks like rust. This stuff works well. Uh, however, I personally prefer this because I can see the blemishes easier. Uh, what also you're going to need is you're going to need some masking tape for different things like, as you can see here, this is a dowel rod. We put masking tape on the end of it so that way we can put the car inside the shaft, uh, put the uh, dowel rod inside the shaft with some tape on it. You're not to get any primer inside the CO2 chamber. But we'll use this to hold it while we paint or spray or do whatever we need to. So finding yourself a three-quarter inch dowel rod, which equals 19 millimeters, would be very uh, helpful for you. You can also use an, a spent CO2 cartridge as, for, as, as well. When I initially start sanding the car and getting the blemishes out, I'll use a 220 grit sandpaper to sand out any imperfections or what we call deflections. Like you see around this hub here, there's some vertical lines. We'll sand that out with the 220. And then once I've got it sanded out and I've got it uh, uh, coated with this, the, uh, the sand sealer or the wood hardener, I'll then move up to using 400 grit after I have primed it. So I'll come back and prime the first coat and then I'll come back and lightly sand it with water inside of a solo cup like you see here. I'll get that water in there and I'll start wet sanding. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll use a sharpie to mark any blemishes that I might see in the paint finish that I need to come back and maybe fill in. If I need to fill in, I can use what's called glazing putty. Glazing putty is made by a company called Bondo, which is famous for automotive repair. Bondo, you just take a little bit of piece of glazing putty and you go back on the areas that you've marked with a Sharpie and you put it on there. It's more looking like this one here. I'd come back and I'd mark an area where I put the glazing putty on so I'd get it prepared to paint. In fact, I see a blemish here and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So I'll take this and I'll use just a little bit on my fingertip here and I'll go to an area where it ha there is a blemish and I'll put a little bit of the glazing putty on there to fill in a low spot. As I look around this car, there's one more spot right here. I'll put a little bit on there to fill in any low spots. Ideally, we do not want to see any wood grain on the finish of our car. So I'll do that and get that on there. And always seal your glazing putty when you get through. Now, once I've done that, I'll start wet sanding with the 400 grit. And I'll probably wind up putting two or three coats of, this, of the primer filler on here until I get the consistency of not seeing any wood grain. And then as I get closer to where it's ready to paint, I'll wet sand it with uh, 800 grit sandpaper. 
And then when I think I'm ready to paint, I'll go ahead and paint the car with the first coat. And when I put the first coat of color on there, I usually use an oil-based paint. Here's an oil-based paint that I'm very, very happy with on cars that I'm just initially starting to test with. It's Rust-Oleum's um, enamel, protective enamel. It's great paint. It's got a real rubberized finish to it once it gets done. Comes in a variety of colors. You get blue, black. Black is excellent. A uh, variety of different colors. And then I would thin that with any kind of paint thinner for my airbrush or sprayer that I'm going to use. So suffice to say that this is the prep stage to get our car to this point where we've wet sanded it and we're actually ready to go ahead and put the final paint like you saw in the first image. Okay, let's get started.